Hey YouTube, how's it going? It's me, R Squad 911, back with another statue unboxing. This just got delivered about an hour ago, and I figured I have about an hour and a half uh, before I have to pick up my daughter. She has a dentist appointment, and I thought I'd do a really quick unboxing on this. Uh, I might not even finish this video, so I might have to cut and then continue after we get back from the appointment. But this is the Sideshow Collectibles uh, Mythos line. It is the Yoda. Uh, this has been out for a few months now, uh, and I only purchased it now, not only because I had coupons, but I did want to buy this on day one. And what stopped me from doing that was um, all the other statues in the Mythos line, they've made quite they're all quite large edition sizes. And when I pre-ordered the Vader, uh, paid full price for it, uh, on the secondary market after, I guess people who bought it had buyer's remorse or uh, they, you know, life situations or whatever, they would sell it and for a significant discount. Uh, I forgot how many thousand uh, of the Vader. Um, so I thought to myself, if I just waited, somebody's gonna sell it and I'm gonna get it for a lot cheaper. But I've waited and waited and waited, and I've barely seen any of these go up for sale. Um, and if they did go up for sale, they weren't much of a discount. You might as well just pay like $20, $30 more and get it brand new from Sideshow. And um, I kind of forgot about it. And recently, I was just kind of on Sideshow and looking, and it popped up and it said, almost gone. Because uh, the break, this is the exclusive version. The regular version is all sold out, or it's on wait list. And this one said, uh, few left. And then I was like, huh, I wonder why it's selling out so quickly. And the reason why, it's only a 400 edition size. So this kind of brings me back to um, Lomrock, the Mythos statue of the Gamorrean Guard. Uh, that one was ultra rare. I think they only made 300, 350, maybe 400, I'm not sure. But uh, that is the most coveted Mythos statue right now, only because of its ultra rarity. I think the best one is Obi-Wan. Uh, but, uh, and then I would say Boba Fett, or tied with the old Mythos Vader, and then, uh, that's at least for me, and then uh, the Gamorrean Guard. But the Gamorrean Guard is on the top of the coveted list because they made so little, and whoever has them now is most likely in their forever homes. I used to have one, but I had an offer that I just could not say no to, and I sold it, right? So, I mean, when you get four or five times of what you paid for is just kind of insane, right? You just got to do it. Um, and, you know, pressure from the wife as well. <laughs> but yes, uh, only a 400 edition size. There's only a few left. Uh, this is 179 to 400. Um, they ship out whatever random numbers there are anyways. But uh, yeah, if there's only a few left, if you're on the fence, you scoop it up before they're all gone, right? Uh, you might be able to find it on secondary market for cheaper. I still see it on eBay for $50 to $100 more than what Sideshow is selling, and they're still available, and those are the regular versions. Uh, but yeah, time to unbox. This is the brown shipper. There's enough of me talking and babbling. Let's just open this thing up. <laughs> a little bit of a dent here, should be okay. That's what these shippers are for. There's an option on Sideshow to double box it for, I think, $20 US more. No point, but this dent does go into the art box here. I feel it. I guess I'll just pull this thing out. There we go. All right. I did want to get the old Sideshow legendary scale Yoda, like legendary meaning half size, half of life size, uh, but I really needed to go with uh, the Mythos line there. And I don't know if you guys noticed, there's something missing back there. I'll give you a few seconds to think about that while I take out this bag. There's one Star Wars statue missing in there. If you haven't guessed, it's the Atticus Stormtrooper. I don't think I ever did an unboxing on that one. Um, yeah, again, I got an offer that I couldn't refuse. Uh, somebody needed to complete their collection, and I didn't want to sell them because it was like the perfect one-fifth scale Stormtrooper. 
And now I don't have a stormtrooper. I'm kind of sad now that I'm talking about it. Uh, so I sold it. And it's kind of like, you know, it's more filled up here and less here. So I figured Yoda's small. It's not going to really block everybody, but we'll see. And uh, it'll be a good fit um, for the rest of the line there. So yes, here is the art box here. Have a nice uh, Yoda here lunging forward. Uh, because this is exclusive, there's going to be two head sculpts and two sabers, which is pretty cool. There's that big dent there. That kind of sucks. Hopefully there's no damage. And then this is this, his base here. It's kind of like his spaceship pod that he's kind of jumping out of, jumping out into action uh, after maybe they shot down his pod. And yeah, that's it. Open this thing up. <laughs> Sideshow, you've changed. I don't know who you are anymore. <laughs> uh, in, in a good way. Look at that. They're using uh, straps instead of using the tape that goes all the way around. Good on you, Sideshow. Now on the bottom here it says 179 to 400, so it's a very low edition size. I really like that. I like that. I mean, I don't mind edition size being bigger either, so everyone can like share in this hobby and they don't get gouged uh, on the secondary market. But it's always nice sometimes to see like a low edition size for a really cool statue. All right, let's open this thing up. Yeah, before these used to be just reserved to XM Studios or to those higher end uh, statue companies. Um, but hey, that's pretty cool. And then I always like to keep these intact. I don't know why, just the collector in me. Lightly stick it there. And then we're going to open. There's a top and a bottom. So let's see, we'll take. Let's open up the top. First there. And that has Yoda. He's pretty small. Actually, his head's pretty big. And then this bottom piece, for some reason, does not want to separate. There we go. And we have the base here. All right, so I'm going to take the tripod, move it closer, and then we're going to get some up-close unbaggings of these pieces. And uh, yeah, while I do this, I'll be right back. Okay, guys, here we are. What are we going to do? We're going to do this base first. Well, there's a base here. But, uh, these are the sides of the bases. This is part of his pod here. Right there. Really nice. Kind of reminds me of my XM Studio Star Lord. <laughs> the glass is nice there too. Has a lot of nice translucentness in it. All right, we'll put that there. And here is another piece of broken glass. It kind of came out of this bag that was here. Put it there. Please ignore my dry hands. It is winter time. It's very light. Here's the other piece here. Everything's all color coded. There's red, so I'm going to probably see that in the base there. That is that. Really, really nice. Look at all the detail, even inside here. Wow. Well done. Well done. This is this is starting is a starting to impress me. I mean, I already knew I wanted this statue from the beginning. I just thought I'd get a better deal. Good thing I had a bunch of sideshow points. Well, that flame looks good, like even with like kind of like the cooling molten lava in there turning into rock. Look at that. It's part of the base too. So like there's the graphic on there. So it probably keys in sideways 
and then you'll see from the bottom that I know when you're actually going to be able to see that. All right, this piece here, got to be really delicate with these. Try to grab it at the thicker parts. It's another one of the flames. Nice. So far, so good. What do we got here? We got another piece of the glass. Very thin pegs. Reminds me of the very original Mythos line where the pegs were super, super thin. And no magnets, right? Okay, so on this one, ooh, we got the lightsabers here. It's nice. I'm not going to use this swishy one. It's kind of like uh, gimmicky to me. This is the base here. So far, so good. Nice, red, yellow, green. Ooh, something just broke off there. I just heard it fall into here. It was maybe just like a burr or something. Oh no, it's chipped. It's all chipped here. That sucks. Yeah, there's a little chip here. I mean, it's no big deal, but yeah. Sacha's so going to be like, return it and we'll send you another one. And be like, ah, I can probably just dab that with a little bit of paint. You're probably gonna, not even going to notice it. But yeah, uh, 179 to 400. And then this part is probably going to continue there, yeah. No, not there. What was this one? White? Is there a white peg here? I don't know. It's going to go somewhere and then continue off of that. Yeah. I thought I could figure it out there, but no. Okay, so put that there. I guess it chipped because when you see where it's how it sits inside here, it's just jammed up against the styrofoam. Like the styrofoam is completely indented. So I am not surprised that it chipped off. Like it is completely almost cut into the into the next compartment. So just the, the shape of it, kind of like a knife edge, right? Anyways, let's put it gently there. And here's another piece of glass. And these are the lightsabers here. Don't want to grab it from the saber, you want to grab it from the hand. Hopefully the camera's focusing. This one just, I don't know. It's cool but weird to me and it's way heavier. Hmm, the detail on the hand is really nice. Okay, put that there. And we will do the, oh, it's broken. Is it broken? I felt something broke. Yep. Broken. Yep. Ugh. Come on, guys. Right there, that part's broken. I mean, they could have put a piece of styrofoam there or something. And it, the way that it's positioned, he's like right up against here. So any impact, and I think that's where the impact was on the box, um, probably spread right to it and, and broke it off. That's unfortunate. I love the sculpted cape. I like his little bissel here. That glue has broken and separated. So there's all this glue 
underneath there, and this I separated too. Oh man, that really sucks. So like, yeah, obviously I could live with the base being chipped a little bit, but that is a little unacceptable. <sighs> okay. I don't even know how he sat in here. Yeah, the way he sits here and this, it just basically rests right up against here. So any type of like heavy fall or dent like you saw on the box will definitely put pressure on this and break it. If they had put maybe some foam inside there to stop it from moving, it might have been the saving grace, but fortunately there was none. Okay, so here are the head sculpts, and I don't know which one is the exclusive and which one is normal. I think maybe the young head is exclusive, so this one to me looks like the older Yoda head. And look at that detail, wow. It actually looks really, really good. No googly eyes. <sighs> I'm kind of bummed. All right, let's see if there's any damage on this one. This one kind of looks like there's some hair strands going everywhere here. Oh, these look okay. But this is like the young Yoda with longer hair tied up in a little fold bun or something. Looks more focused here. No, it's kind of the same, kind of the same look. Just different hair. Yeah. All right. Now, don't know how I'm going to put this guy back in. I don't want to break those hair pieces. Let's put it like that. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna set the camera back again and we're gonna start assembling this thing, all right? So, and also I'm gonna take some photos first before I assemble them to send a sideshow and figure out what's gonna happen with this. Uh, but yeah, I'll be right back. Okay guys, I'm back. It's actually the next day. Um, I just wanted to take photos and send an email out to sideshow and uh, still no response. Usually I get a response within a couple hours. So uh, when I spoke to online customer service, they said uh, they were busy and they had a lot of uh, things to deal with. So, you know, uh, I'll just be patient and wait, I suppose. Uh, so in the meantime, I'm going to assemble this guy. Uh, hopefully Sideshow will help me uh, with that issue. Um, so yeah, just gonna move these things off the table onto the floor and then we will start to assemble. All right, so I've got the Lazy Susan over here. And then this is the base. I'm assuming it faces this way. All right, nice, tiny, cute base. And then we're gonna grab, I don't know which piece first, just grab any random piece, this one's red. And I'm assuming it goes to red. Lots of styrofoam all here. There we go. Pop that out of the way. Um, and then we have this piece here. This is yellow. And boom. That uh, goes together quite nicely. And I think the only next thing we have is red. Um, but we do have these pieces as well. Let's see. Green. You know what? It's green down here, and I just assume that that's where Yoda plugs in, but, you know, obviously I'm, I'm wrong. This one's green, the flame here. Does that make sense? I think that makes sense. Yeah, because I think Yoda 
is at the top. Not sure. Oh wow, that when that pegs in, it is resting right up against this piece of glass here. And so it's not sitting perfectly. Um, but I guess if I use a little bit of a hair dryer, I can kind of move that forward and everything will be fine. Now we have white here. Where does white peg into? Oh, down in front here. So I think I'm going to have to remove this guy. He does not want to be removed. There we go. No, am I wrong? Where did it disappear to? Oh, here. So white pegs into here. There we go. And then we'll put this over top there. Perfect. Next one will be the broken Yoda body. It's weird that his Bissell is silver. It's uh, usually brown. And he will peg right up into here. Wow. That's kind of crazy because he has some decent weight to him. And that pegs it nice, nice and snug. Nice and flush. Wow, he's just like a flying, soaring, headless Yoda right now. <laughs> uh, oh, we still have these glass pieces here. Where do these go? I have, well, let's see. This piece looks like it pegs right into here. Goes outwards. The glass should be going outwards. Yeesh. Whoosh. It sucks when it's not magnetic. You actually gotta try to find where the peg hole is and then put it in. And man, maybe I should just look at this photo. No, nothing. There's no no photo for it. Just gonna figure out where these all go. And that is part of all the fun, I suppose. That one was easy to find. I mean, it has to be around this area. Aha, but which is for which is the question. I'm going to have to take Yoda off of here. I'm thinking that most likely I'll have to return this whole statue for a replacement. If everything fits nicely, I won't mind keeping them and I'll just fix them myself. But, you know, if they give me a discount. But it just kind of, so I've already had a day to kind of like mull over it and get over, get over it. Hmm. So I should put this flame in afterwards because it looks like these glass pieces go here. There we go. There we go. All right. For some reason, it just worked. Put this flame back in. Oh my goodness. Now I don't know if the flame will even work. I 
it's just hitting everything now. Nope, it goes this way. That's probably why. Yeah, there's some clearance. Everything clears, yeah, yeah, like half a millimeter there. Now we can put Yoda's body back in. Boom. He's actually quite tall. Um, hopefully he goes in there okay. We'll do a shot afterwards once I have him in. I am not going to do the little swoopy lightsaber. I think that's a little gimmicky. Going to go with uh, this one. Ah, oh, that's magnetic. That's nice. And then for the portrait, I'm definitely going to go with the uh, non-man bun head. Um, I'm going to go with the Yoda that we all know and love from episode five. I can do without his, uh, his fancy little fold bun on the back of his head. <laughs> Maybe there's an actual Jedi term for that, but, uh, yeah, that's, that's him all assembled. Pretty happy with him. Let's take a look, see. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Same expression, just different hair. Yeah, definitely uh, like this one better. I mean, I think this is the regular, right? Um, this one's the exclusive head. So, I mean, it would have been cheaper to get the uh, non-exclusive but that was sold out and me i always go with the exclusive anyways uh, it's just nice to have some switch out and i think uh, resale on it later on is uh, much better when you have these extra options right but he looks good i love the sculpted cloak cape whatever like even the sigil on the back of him his bissel i wish it was brown not silver um, yeah he looks good Except for the uh, broken piece there. Ah. Even if that was reattached, it's not really something you could tell that it's missing. Today, for some reason, it's not mating up nicely. Ah. Yeah. But we'll see what Sideshow says. I'll let you. I'll update you guys in the description section down below. And let you know what they say but uh yeah that is yoda assembled i'm gonna bring the camera up close i'm gonna do some close-ups all right so be right back okay guys i'm back here he is assembled right before your eyes i'm just gonna spin him around on this turntable maybe i should invest on one of those automatic ones with the remotes i think they're pretty expensive but i have to say i'm very impressed with uh, the way that they did this uh, lava here. It's a little kind of loosey-goosey there. Um, just, it looks so real, like just by the way it's cooling and where it's more molten and then the outer parts are cooling, turning into rock. The glass looks great. It is uh, quite translucent when you put your finger up to it. And it really looks like it's just shattering outwards as Yoda is jumping forward into action. These score marks, the burn marks here look pretty good. These ones, I eh, could have done more, maybe some more black charring on it. But overall, I'm very, very happy with just the color, the paint. Uh, Yoda has done exceptionally well. There's detail all around, even behind it, underneath, you can just see all the greedlies, all the, the connectors and connections. Um, it's Quite amazing uh, what they did here, even with all these styrofoam bits still stuck to it. Yeah. So what I'll probably do as well is I'll do the switch outs for you guys so you guys can see what it looks like. He is on there very solid. Um, I would not worry about any sagging or leaning or anything. He seems to be... Yeah, he's on there really good. Even though the peg is small, um, I think they, they've engineered it quite well. 
and that's him with his new portrait there. And then of course, just for the sake of doing it, kind of, it's kind of like Vader's flame sword. <laughs> Not doing the flame sword, uh, but going to put that in there. Like that, come on, that kind of looks a little cheesy, right? But, uh, when you first look at it, it's like, oh, is it dripping something? Is it a scythe now? Like what's going on? Like a double scythe? Yeah, that's cool. You know, just not for me. If you guys like it, that's fine um, to each their own. But for me, it is definitely regular saber and regular head. Ah, that head's okay. That head's all right. Yeah, and then I forgot to mention to Sideshow that the his Bissell has unglued from there. I totally forgot about that, uh, but that's fine. Doesn't bother me. And then there we go. I like how the head pegs in. It even has this kind of triangle here to just kind of go into his collar. And I think that really completes it. Instead of actually just doing a line all the way across, you would see that. So it's sitting with a triangle into it, uh, makes it seamless. And it's great. All right, so let's take uh, the camera off the tripod and we'll do some close ups. Okay, guys, I'm back. Here's some close ups. That's the close up of his head right there. <laughs> um, but we're going to start off with the base. You can see all that detail in there. Look at that, that scoring. That looks pretty good. But what's most impressive is this molten lava flame or spewing lava or, yeah, must have crashed onto like Mustafar or something. Um, but look at the reds. I really like the red that they did here. And even, you know, that kind of, I don't know, did a lightsaber cut through that or did it just shear off? Who knows? But uh, what I was uh, saying was I wasn't too impressed with uh, these pipes here. <laughs> I mean, just a very small gripe. Uh, the glass looks great. Look how it looks all cracked and shattered and broken. You can see when I put my finger behind it, it has some good clarity there. And then keeps focusing on Starscream over there. And it goes to the back here. Look at the detail in there. Wow. So like the minor chipping there doesn't bother me because it's, it's just lost in all of that. You can see the flame bursting through there. See how it's all melting all around. It looks so good. And then all of this detail here, it's so amazing. Could they have put in maybe more, I don't know, like color or shading? Yes, but it's the back of the statue and just having all this detail already is kind of awesome. All right. And then moving on up, you can see more of the glass here all broken up. And it looks really good. Look how it's shattering forwards, outwards with great explosive power from Yoda. You can see his cape here, sigil back here. The hair looks amazing. Even the inside of the ears, the skin texture, the hand, jewelry. Even like the spaces inside his cloak look great. They're not, the, the detail continues in, um, which is amazing. I think it's a great time to be a statue collector. Just the tech that they're using now to, to, to make these are so good and to get all these dynamic poses. Um, just to like have them pegged right there and just hold all that weight forward is quite amazing. You can see a Lightsaber here, his fingernails look great. Lightsaber goes from dark to light. They've been doing that a lot lately, just that kind of like force at the bottom. Uh, more of like a blast and then it just smoothens out near the, near the tips. Again, more detail here. Look at that. From his arm wraps. Um, his tunic underneath his robes. 
in underneath the cape here. Like all the details are there. Um, they didn't they didn't just end it somewhere. Um, this is why I love the Mythos line so well, so much. <laughs> and they do it so well. That's what I meant to say. So a lot of detail here on his feet. Into his belt, even the pouch underneath his robe. And then the Bissell. This is where it unglued. Unfortunate, it's okay. And then of course his face, his eyes, laser focused on what he's about to do. A master of masters. And yeah, look at that, like the detail on the ear. Like it looks like it almost goes all the way in. It looks great. Well done, Sideshow. Um, just not well done on that. Uh, it's a clean break. I'll show you guys here. So I put it on. You're not, you're not going to tell that it was broken. See, I just move it and you can tell. So sucks, but we'll see what they say. Um, but I'll just display them with this shark fin on his back or something. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. Happy to have him in the collection. He's going to go up there in between, in beside Boba Fett and in between and in front of Maul and Vader. I'm going to move Rex and Ahsoka forward. So it is going to be really good because now I'll have two good guys, two bad guys. Well, Vader's half good in the end and then Boba Fett is kind of neutral, right? So yeah. That's it for now. That's my quick unboxing, a long assembly because I couldn't get those pegs in. Um, but uh, happy to have them in my collection. Please like and subscribe, comment below. Um, scoop this up. There's very few left of these, only edition size of 400. So I have a feeling that uh, this is going to be pretty coveted later on. There's not a ton of awesome looking Yoda statues like this. So yeah, I will catch you guys in the next one.